Good morning, guys. That was a cute good morning. Guys, yeah, I'm a fantasy author, a children's author. I write about a strong, confident girl who's lost in a fantasy realm and must fight for her life. But when I'm not writing, I'm traveling the world and I visit schools. I talk to students, I work with them. I do my best to change the way they look at literacy. I do my best to inspire them when it comes to imagination. More importantly, I do my utmost to teach them to pursue their dreams. However, when you guys turn to the dictionary and you look at the definition of heroes, you will not find me there. No. <laughs> no way. If you're still looking at H, you might find me in Hooligan. You might find me under J for Joker. Definitely M for Mischief Maker. And no doubt, I'm the definition of naughtiness. I'm not a hero. I wouldn't want to be a hero. Truth be told, I'm happier being more of a bad boy. But at the same time, I believe in heroes. I do. I think we need them. Heroes shape me. You know when you're a young child and you pick open those books and you read about those heroes and heroines, have those amazing lives full of action and adventure? That's what I wanted in my life. Yet when I looked around at the world around me, I thought in my heart of hearts, most adults were bland, dry, and boring, who just sleepwalk through life, who do that nine to five, that office job, and have given up on their dreams. I didn't want that. Truly, I wanted to be like those heroes. So at age 14, I started to work. Each weekend at school, I would go to work on building sites. I became a laborer. I would mix and pour cement to carry great stacks of bricks across my shoulders. But I did it in order to save up my wages. So come the summer school holidays, I, as a 14-year-old London boy, could start to travel up to the Lake District, then further field up to Scotland. But don't get me wrong, not with my parents, not with adults, not with family, just with a friend or two the same age as I. When I was 16, I started to escape to Europe. I go to Paris, Marseille, Nice, Oporto, La Coruña, Madrid, again. Not with adults, not with family, just with a friend or two the same age as I. And then, when I was 18 and a grown man, I packed my bag, said goodbye to my friends and family, and started traveling the world all by myself. And after that, I did not stop. I could not stop. I've climbed across the frozen waterfalls of the Kumbu Glacier. I've been sandboarding in the Sahara. I spent years of my life snowboarding. I used to fight professionally in the Golden Triangle. I've been beaten. I'm bloodied on the streets of Chiang Mai and unfortunately London as well. Yeah, no doubt, not necessarily a good look. I've been surfing, wakeboarding, climbing. I've done combinations of scuba diving and caving at the same time. I've just gone out there to pursue adrenaline, to go out there and pursue adventure. I wanted to have that hero's path. Unfortunately, when I came out the other side, not so much of a hero. But because I've traveled so much, done so much, stepped off the beaten path, it's allowed me to write books. It's allowed me to write fancy books about strong, confident teenage girls who go out there and truly become heroes and heroines. My life has been fueled by books, and more importantly, by the characters inside it. If I hadn't read Like a Beast, I wouldn't be the man that I am now. But my definition of what it means to be a hero has changed. I don't think we need big, strong, outrageous heroes anymore. I think we need a different type of hero. So I want to talk about one of my besties, Alethea. All oh my days, she is my role model. She's my inspiration. Leafy was so good at rugby, she's been scouted by the Wasps and the England rugby team. She turned it down. She didn't want to do that. She instead became a nurse. And my girl is so good at her job. Most of the time, she works as a triad. She's saving lives left, right, and center. And when she has to work in the ward, she's the person who's holding the hand of someone who's dying or someone who's in pain and misery, who's been left by themselves. I could never be as good as my friend Leafy. For me, she's my hero, my inspiration. But then there's my boy Gotam. All oh, my days, Gotam is phenomenal. This man, truly, is a hero of heroes. You might not believe it when you see it, but truly, he's astounding. Gotam was born in Calcutta, 
and for whatever reason, his parents threw him out the street at age two. He contacted polio. His legs became dystrophied. He survived for two years on the streets in Calcutta. In those conditions, remarkable. Mother Teresa found him, pulled him off the streets, put him in an orphanage. And my boy Gotam and the other orphans will climb to the roof of the orphanage and they'll lie back, their hands cut behind the head, and stare at the planes overhead. And for them, planes were the definition of freedom. It means that you had the money to leave all your troubles and woes behind to fly somewhere else. Gotam got adopted, brought to the UK. I've known my boy since I was 12, and Gotam is amazing. He came from that background. Gotam has gone further than that. He's become a qualified pilot. He's engineered and designed a set of foot pedals that allows him to fly a plane without the use of his feet. And oh my days, Gotam runs a charity called Freedom in the Air, where he takes able-bodied and disabled students up into the skies in his plane, and he allows them to take control of the plane and fly to show that they have all the freedom they desire to leave all their troubles behind. Gotam, for me, is a hero of heroes. I think that's what we need. Not the big heroes. We need the small, silent heroes who truly make change. And I want to tie it back to education, because I visit a lot of schools. I visit maybe 100 schools domestically per annum, 30 to 40 internationally. And I have to tell you that we're not doing enough for our students. We're not. We're not preparing them for the real world. We're not giving them the skills that they need. We're not giving them the strengths that they need. Come on now. We're in the UK. Is it just me, or is health and safety gone a little bit crazy? Is it just me, or do we wrap our kids in bubble wrap? Is it just me, or do kids get turned off from risk? We don't tell them to go out there and take risks. We tell them that mistakes are a bad thing. We don't want them to go out there and break rules. We don't want them to go out there and be strong giants. We do the opposite of that. We don't build giants anymore. And our world at the moment, I think it's kind of remarkable. Come on now, look at our health. Look at hospitals. Look at the science we have around them. That's because our world has been built on giants. But we stop doing that. We're not encouraging our students to become all that they could be. Worse than that. We've lost the diversification in imagination, in creativity. Remember back in the 90s? You'd have your hip-hop heads, you'd have your skaters, you'd have your goths, you'd have your punks, you'd have your jocks, you'd have your nerds. But if you go to school now, all my days, all the students look the same. They're acting like sheep. They don't have that guts, that courage to be individual. They don't desire to stand out from the crowd. We've built a herd of sheep. We're not doing the best for our students. I hate to say this. More than anything else in the world, our children, our students are our greatest resource. They're our future. We need them to become giants. If we don't give them the skills, if we don't inspire them with heroism and strength of character, what will they turn into? I hate to say this. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. It's our fault. Come on now, you know it is. We sleepwalk through society. We don't stand up and demand a change. We don't stand up and demand that our students are given the skills that they need. So if there's one thing that I'd ask, just one thing, is that you guys stand up. You ask for change. You do your utmost to encourage our students to follow their dreams. We do our utmost to encourage our students to build that inner strength. We should encourage them to go out and make mistakes. We should encourage them to go out and investigate things, try things, do new things, pursue things. We should encourage them to fall over. And we should give them the strength, the character, to pick themselves back up and try and try again. So for me, when I travel, yeah, that's my war cry. Yes, authors have war cries. It's play more, read more, and chase life with a passion. For truly, we only have the opportunity to do it once. I would say it again, please, please, for our students, for our future, for their future, encourage them and try and nourish that sense of heroism 
that's needed. Guys, we have two minutes left. I'm a big, bold, ugly man. I've done some crazy things in my life. Do you have any questions, anything you want to ask in the 120 seconds we have left? Any questions? What's the most dangerous thing you've ever done? <laughs> Got married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, worse than that. My wife, she's half Russian, she's half Puerto Rican. When she's in a bad mood, I have to break the nurse window, dive out and run screaming into the distance. It's not a good look. Who else? Who else? Do I meditate? I used to. And when I did it, I was a lot more efficient than what I do, but I've slid in my ways. I think I should go back to it. I don't do it at the moment. Who's up? Who's up? Come on now. Entertain me. Last couple of questions. I'm going to challenge someone to a dance-off. And we know who that would be. Saya. I've had a terrible accident. Um, I was doing the Iron Cross at gymnastics, and I completely severed both my chest tendons. I had surgery in October. I had to spend 10 weeks of my life in my arms and slings doing that little hobble, and it's terrible. Around the sheets where I live, I'm known as a T-Rex man, because all the kids look, I look like a dinosaur. I'm not pursuing the things that I want to do. I'm quite active. You know, I like to do gymnastics. Um, I like to do fight classes. I do sword fighting. I like to climb. I can't do that at the moment. So I'm hoping to chase my fears. So for me, I'm terrified of heights. I'm hoping that some friends who may be sitting here in the audience would help me to face up to my fears. So the thing that I like to do at the moment is go out there, find the tallest building that I can, and just kind of hang on my head over it so I can look down and scream a little bit. But the more I do that, hopefully I'll be better in my fear. Guys, I think we're done. I think we're dusted. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see some of you a little bit later. Thank you, guys. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk. To find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.